back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria, the head witch of Bahati Life Apothecary. Thank you so much for tuning in. Obviously, today we're going to be talking about blood magic. Now, anytime you mention blood and magic in the same word, in the same sentence, people start to get fearful and have anxiety and start panicking and all these ideas and images start racing through their heads of crazy witch stereotypes and stigmas. But honestly, my intent today is to help to explain what it is, why you would want to do blood magic, and also how to do it if you decide that this is something that is right for you. Disclaimer, blood magic, of course, is not something that it is that you should mess with or that you should take lightly if you're are not educated, informed, and you don't know what it is that you're doing. It goes without saying that blood carries a lot of diseases or has the potential to carry a lot of diseases and viruses that could make people sick. So you want to make sure that you're, if you are doing blood magic, that you're doing it responsibly. And of course it goes without saying that you don't want to exchange blood with any other person or animal or thing, and you definitely don't want to do animal sacrifices. Now, before the internet comes from my head, I understand that there are witches and practitioners out there that do animal sacrifice. I am not one of them. That is not my, that's not something that it is that I partake in. So just before you come from my head, because there's two types of people that will see this video. There's the witches that are like, how dare you? I do animal sacrifice all the time. Just burn, burn. And then there's the other people that are like, witch, witch, doing blood magic on the internet. Burn, burn. It's just like, calm down, calm down. Everyone has a different path. So basically, again, what it is that I'm going to do, hopefully explain successfully what blood magic is, how and why you would choose to do it, and how to do it. Now, when we talk about blood, of course, it has this connotation to it that strikes a lot of fear and anxiety, and naturally this makes sense. If you look at nature in general, when we see the color red or if we see blood, there's something that alerts us to whatever that is, whether it be desire and attraction or whether it be something that is pushing you away because you are being triggered, something is in danger. That is the power of the color red and also the power of seeing blood. In fact, Seeing blood for so many, for a lot of people is so powerful that they will actually faint. How many of you guys can relate to getting blood work done and you see the needle go in your arm and you're just completely triggered and then you pass out, you feel lightheaded and faint and you're just like, oh God, I just like, you know, you just can't handle it. There's a lot of people that feel that way because something is internally getting triggered and brought up to the surface, which is this natural reaction to panic or to have fear, this fight or flight response. That's the power of blood and that's the power of the color red. Also in nature, when you see the color red, again, like I said before, it's either there to attract like a red flower or it's there to signal that there is danger. We see this a lot when we look at snakes or spiders who have the red marking on their, on their body that's to suggest that you this is something that you don't want to mess with this is something that is off limits or dangerous and will mess you up if you keep shredding with it or if you poke at it there is power in nature magic when it comes to the color red now in our own bodies blood is the bringer and the bearer of life if there is a cut if you are bleeding it is because your protective barrier has been compromised and you are at risk or in danger hopefully not but you're at risk of bleeding out and potentially and potentially dying when we see the color red or if we see blood our reaction is to run away from it or run towards it running towards it because that animal or that person needs help or running towards it because whatever it is is visually stunning visually striking so the color red and blood in general sparks a response and that in itself is energy that's something to keep in mind when you're working with blood magic but again we'll cross that bridge and we'll talk about that when we get there when there is a cut or when there's something that happens that releases blood a loss of blood is essentially a loss of life a gain of blood is a gain of life this is what happens when people have blood transfusions their bodies are not healthy or they need the support of life to come in and that blood comes in and gives them life again a loss of blood is a loss of life a gain of blood is the gaining of energy that's something that it is that you want to keep in mind when you're working your magic because that's essentially what it is that you're bringing into the energy of your magic when you're working with blood our goal 
goal as a human being in order to sustain life is to make sure that our blood is strong. That's why when we go to the doctor, the first thing we do is we go and get our blood work so we can see all of what has been going on in our bodies. That is what blood is. It's the overall overarching energy of the life that is happening within our bodies. So again, that should not be taken lightly when we're working our magic using blood magic because this is the blood that's been pumping all throughout our bodies and it all comes directly from our heart, the core of our being, the core of our center. When we are angry, the blood floods to our heads. That's because that's where the energy goes. If we are aroused, that's where the blood goes because that's where the energy goes. Where blood goes is where life goes. That's where the energy is flowing. So when you are using blood magic, essentially what it is that you're doing is you are powerfully concentrating energy and life into that area. But the thing is about blood is that it pumps throughout your entire body, your entire being, and that comes directly from your heart. So when you are using blood in your magic, this is a really strong bond, a really strong seal because it comes from the core of your being. It is essentially and actually your life energy being weaved into the fiber of your magic for that moment. And that is not something to take lightly at all. When you decide that you want to work with blood magic, you need to make sure that whatever it is that you're bringing into your life or that you're conjuring or the life energy that it is that you're putting into that magic is something essentially that it is that you're very serious about, that you're committed about for not just here in this moment, but also for life. This is a seal, this is a permanent, this is a bond. In a lot of ways, it is a sacrifice. Now, when I say sacrifice, now this comes again with a lot of different ideas, stigmas and stereotypes, fear, anxiety, excitement, anger, all types of things, but hold on, let me explain. A long time ago in Bible times, people were making animal sacrifices a lot. Now, again, like I said in the very beginning of this video, I don't personally partake in animal sacrifices, although I do have friends and people that I know of that do. It makes sense why they do it, but again, that's not something that I partake in, and if I'm going to do sacrifice, it's gonna come from my own being. It's going to come from my own body, especially when it comes to blood sacrifice of any shape or form. But again, way back in Bible times, people were being called to do animal sacrifice and to perform animal sacrifice because during that time, the, that animal was all that they had. So it makes sense that that was something that it was that they were being asked to sacrifice. When you are doing a sacrifice, it is essentially you saying to the higher spirit, to the higher divine that I'm going to take all of what I have and I'm going to give it over to you because I have, I have trust and I have faith that you're going to provide for me in exchange for what it is that I'm giving you. This is the last of what it is that I have. And during Bible times, having an animal was a way to pay the bills, it was a way to create meat, a way to create uh, warmth and food, putting food on the table. It, having an animal was creating life for your family, essentially, in so many different ways. But now, in today's society, we are almost constantly sacrificing animals and not even thinking about the life of that animal because we're constantly putting meat on our tables or putting dressing ourselves in leather or whatever the case is. That in itself is not a sacrifice. We live in a world today, many of us live in a world today where we don't think about the sacrifices that are that are happening around us. So it's not actually a sacrifice because it's so given it's given so freely to us. We don't even think about it. So essentially it's not a sacrifice because a sacrifice is something that you have to lose and that you have to step into a space of trust. There is something that essentially needs to be given as a representation of your trust and your faith. Now for most of us, again, that is not animal sacrifice, but there are many, again, who do partake in animal sacrifice and I'm not talking to you. Don't come from my head. I'm just letting you know. This is where I come from. This is my belief system. This is my video on blood magic no shade. And that's one thing too that I want to make clear is that when we're saying blood magic or when I'm saying blood magic, I'm not also saying animal sacrifice or any type of sacrifice of anything else. If I'm going to do blood magic, it's going to come directly from me because that animal is unwillingly <laughs> getting sacrificed or its life is getting sacrificed. And for me, that's not a sacrifice. It's kind of a tongue twister and I hope that that makes sense. But if I'm going to do any type of blood magic, it's going to come directly from me. And if I'm going to do a sacrifice, it's because I'm exchanging something that it is that I rely on and that I need again because I have faith in the universe and the divine and doing this exchange with spirit that they will then provide for me because I have given this to them out of faith and trust now is blood magic is it evil or is it bad 
with anything, there is the potential to turn a positive thing into a negative. We see that all the time. So blood magic does not have to be evil or bad, but it can in the wrong hands. The same thing is true for the same knife and fork that you use to cut your vegetables for dinner. You can use that knife and fork to cut through a plum tomato, and you can also use that same knife and fork to stab your neighbor. Don't stab your neighbor. But I'm saying this to prove my point that it's all about the intent of the person working with that tool. If your intent is for ill or for evil or for bad, then of course it's going to turn into a bad thing. Blood magic turns into a negative thing when the person who is using it has negative intention. However, you could use blood magic in order to sustain and to create life for yourself or to a situation that you want to build and create longevity and permanency for. I'm gonna use myself as an example because I've done this in the past in order to help me to heal and to move past issues that I've had with anxiety in, in the past. Now again, I have to say as a little disclaimer that I am not a psycho professional by any means, although my background was in psychology for many years and that was what I majored in in college, but I'm not a trained psychotherapist or psychologist. Blood magic and what it is that I'm saying should never be exchanged for the help and the advice and the consult of a professional. Just disclaimer, because I have to say that I'm not trying to get sued today or tomorrow. But in the past, when I was working to heal myself from my own personal anxiety, I wanted to make a commitment, a permanent bond to myself that I was gonna have life health and vitality restored to my body because so much of me felt weakened. So what I did was I wrote the intention of what I wanted to be brought into my life when it came to my health and my longevity. And I seeped it in the energy of blood, menstrual blood. I can just feel the internet burning me with their stares and being like, this girl is either crazy or she's dangerous or she's violent or a threat to humanity. I'm not. Witches are doing this forever. It is so terrifying to put yourself out there and to talk about these things, but we're doing it today because we are fearless witch warriors. But that being said, let's go ahead and move on. And I did uh, write my intention for the life that I wanted to feel every day, which was healthy and vibrant and free of anxiety and tension and depression that was stemming from the, the amount of anxiety that I was experiencing in my life at that time. So I wrote it down, I soaked it in a mix, a light mix of blood and water, and then I pulled the paper out, folded it up, and then buried it in the backyard in the earth. And that was very powerful. You guys know I work with earth magic, herbs, and fire. And to have these elements come together, to me, was me setting the intention and the commitment to create a life that had peace, and vitality in it and health. And I have been anxiety free ever since. So that's one example of how to use blood magic, that signature, that seal, that commitment of life and vitality of restoring that in your life using blood magic. And also myself as an example. The next thing that I wanna say is that I do not recommend or encourage, nor should you do this, use other people's blood or other things blood, including animals that are not w willing participants. I personally would not do a blood exchange with anybody because the risk of like blood-borne diseases and viruses is just way too high in today's time. But I also don't really see myself ever truly wanting to make a blood commitment to anyone like that because of the intensity of that bond. What if something happens? There's so much that can happen within that energy exchange and it just ties the two of you guys together when you make that. And that's not something that I could see myself ever really doing in this lifetime, but who knows? Who knows? Also, connecting the, your blood energy to another person's blood energy, it's truly the core of your being, like the core of your being connecting with another person as physical and as intimate as it can truly get outside of like sex magic, but very, very close. And you have no idea what that person subconsciously carries and what their intent is, even if you've known them for years and you trust them. It's just you tie that person in who knows what the future has for that relationship. If you guys are meant to be together, if you're meant to be bonded together, that will happen naturally. I don't think that it's something that you should force with blood. But again, that's just me. Don't come for my head if you've done this before with a friend or a partner. And if you have done this with a friend or a partner, I'm curious to see what that relationship looks like today and your experiences with that because I have seen blood magic backfire with people that have been like best friends for years and then they do that, um, a blood a blood magic, uh, 
a blood magic tie and it just when fights naturally happen with relationships and people naturally change so there's just too much up in the air when it comes to human nature in general that I personally wouldn't do it but just because I wouldn't do it doesn't mean that you should if you feel called to make a, a tie through blood with another person by all means do it I just am saying I don't recommend it for multiple reasons another thing that I have to say is that you really truly want to be careful when it comes to working blood magic because this in a lot of ways people can be triggered by the the idea or the act of creating that blood creating the using the tool in order to implement the um retrieval of that blood <laughs> So for example, there's, I'm laughing because I'm like, what are the best words to use to describe this without freaking the internet out if I haven't already? For example, if you're a person who has a history with self-harm behavior or idealization with self-harm or anything like that, this is probably not the plan of action. This is probably not the route for you. If you are a female though, you do have the option of using menstrual blood, which obviously flows natural from your body with little to no pain outside of the cramps that we experience on the regular. I don't know about you guys, but my cramps have been insane lately, so I'm going to be implementing acupuncture into my life in order to help with that. But yeah, if you're triggered by um, expelling blood from the body, I don't want to use the word self-harm because self-harm has an intent behind it. The intent to hurt yourself for whatever your reason is. And I know that some of my tribe members have had experience with that, but this is not self-harm. It doesn't fall under the same category of self-harm. The intention is not to hurt yourself. The intent is to create a bond, a seal, and to do magic. That is the intent of it, not to hurt yourself. So if you get triggered by doing this, then that is not the plan of action. That's not the route that you wanna go. That's not the way that you wanna go. But you can use other things, such as menstrual blood, in order to get the same result. And in fact, that's the way that I usually do it. I don't prick my hand, I don't cut myself, I don't do anything like that. I would use menstrual blood. If I don't have my period during that time, then I'm probably most likely not going to use blood, blood magic, because me personally, I feel like the timing isn't right. And I'm not going to conserve and save my menstrual blood because that's not something that I would do, although I know that there are people who have and will, and that they do it in a safe way. Now, some ways that you can use blood magic for your own magic is for your protection, for your health and vitality. For example, that ritual that it is that I told you about in order to help me to move past my anxiety and to bring health and healing back to my body and to restore balance. For love spells, obviously, to pull in a mate or to sub or to create a bond between two people. However, make sure that both parties are willing. You don't want to force anything for any reason. And then also for survival and of course, long lasting bonds. Okay, so one of the ways that you can use blood magic in ritual and your magical practice is by taking a few drops because really that's all you need and diluting it in water or a carrier oil or even using it to sign your name. And then using it to anoint a candle or to anoint an object, for example, a list of things that you wrote down, a list of intentions that you wrote down and that you soak it in that mixture. Like I said before, one of my favorite things to do is to then allow it to dry, fold it up, and then bury it really, really deep into the earth. That's just me because I personally love working with earth magic and I love the stability and the structure of what the earth brings and the energy of what the earth brings. Another way that you can use blood magic is by using the blood to sign your name or when you're done writing your intentions to smear the blood on the paper. But if you do do that, make sure that people do not find it because they will be concerned and think that you're crazy if they don't understand what it is that you're doing. All right, so now that I've officially broken it down to you and now that I've officially put myself out there for one of the most controversial forms of magic out there outside of sex magic, I'm gonna go ahead and sign off. I hope that that makes a lot of sense. If you have any questions, please let me know. And if you have experience with working with blood magic, I definitely wanna hear it down below in the comments. Have you done blood magic? What was your experience with working with blood magic? I do wanna say that there is this thing lately that I've been seeing on the internet about people putting their menstrual blood in their husband or boyfriend's cups and having them drink it in order to make them commit to them. Don't do it. That's not a good idea. Don't do it, don't do it. That's not a good idea. Yeah, outside of the fact that you put that person in danger, but that person will be tied to you forever and they could really truly go crazy and that's not, not something that you wanna have chasing after you. When you're working with blood in general and a person consumes or ingests it, just makes me wanna gag just thinking about it, but 
you can really open the door for some crazy psychological subconscious triggerings within that person it creates that bond that that lasting bond that you might not want to the point where it could push into like stalker territory or like next thing you know you're on murder case files like it's just you don't have time for it boo trust me if i don't maybe it's just me i don't think that it's ever a good idea to uh, tie a person to you that is not natural but again everybody's different and I'm not here to judge I'm just saying this is my experience this is what I do this is what it is this is what you can do and there you go go off go off and work your magic in the ways that it is that you're gonna do it but don't harm anybody obviously don't harm anybody that's not that shouldn't be your intention anyway especially not from my tribe all right you guys that being said I'm off thank you so much for being understanding thank you for listening Thank you for commenting, for sharing these videos, and for subscribing because there's plenty more videos where this came from, and I'll see you in my next. Love you. Bye.